This is part 8 of our series on how to use Ultimaker Cura for complete beginners. In this video we will learn how to organize a print bed to print all of the parts of a working Pokeball. I'm going to challenge myself in this video and see if I can't get this entire Pokeball, all of the parts that makes this Pokeball, on one bed, and specifically my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro bed. And so this file is really cool. It's a, it's a fun Pokeball. I have several of them in my classroom as decorations. I also can give them away as prizes to my students for various projects or competitions. This file is great because it comes with assembly instructions and it even comes with a video showing you how to put the whole thing together with all of the individual parts. What do you need to put this thing together outside of the printed parts? A strip of PLA filament sort of creates this hinge, which is kind of cool. It's very creative and clever. And then just get any old spring from a pin and cut it in half and put it right here for the button so that the button is able to push open and closed. And there's a little latch built in so that it locks and you have to push the button to open the Pokeball or else it won't open. And so it's a really cool little clever design. Um, let's go ahead and put all these files on one bed. So I'll go to my fun folder and go to Pokeball. And which files do I want? I want the bottom white. Anytime they have an 80 on it, what it's saying is it's an 80% size. They redid the file just 20% smaller. I want the button, not the button white. And I even made a note to myself that this one is actually two files, not one. I don't want the great ball. I do want the lip red. I do want the bottom. I want the loop top. And I want the ring and the stand. And I think that's all the files. You can obviously redo this with the other files if you wanted to, if you want to do the master ball or the great ball. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And let's close this out. And let's start separating some of these files so that we can see what we're looking at. Now, obviously, if I were working on a bigger print bed like my Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, I could easily fit all these files on one bed, but that's not the challenge. The challenge today is to get it all on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, which if you don't have one, it's about the size of an Ender 3. And so let's see if we can fit all of these files on here. If there's one file that I am okay with not getting on here, it's probably the stand. So let's move the stand off the bed entirely so that we can spread it out. And we'll see if we can add the stand in later as well, if we can figure this out. We can go ahead and separate these two. And what are these two? This is the button and the ring. If you look back at that button white, that is the button and the ring file together. You can see that it is just these two files together, just set up as one file. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and keep these two as well. You'll notice that this one was turned sideways. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So now we fit all of these on here pretty well and pretty easily just fitting the stand on here might be a challenge but let's go ahead and start looking at what these actually do and you can see that most of the files have a flat surface touching the bottom giving them plenty of surface area and just connecting to the bottom and needing a minimal amount of supports there is going to be a bunch of supports needed right here we'll talk about that in a little bit this is the interesting one that I want to talk about, and that is that so little of this file is actually touching the print bed because it has this bottom overhang for the hinge itself. And so if we were to slice this with supports on, let's go ahead and hit slice and go to preview. You can see that very little of this print is actually starting by touching the print bed right here. Everything else has to be supported until it gets to that layer that is over those supports. And it kind of makes sense that it would have to go this way. And it's even not even that big of a deal. These supports wouldn't be hard to break off at all. And it would work just fine. But I want to see if I can't be creative. And there's a few reasons why I want to be creative. Number one is I would like to be able to fit this stand on here if I can. And number two is I'd like to prevent all of these extra supports and use as little supports as possible if I can. And so what I want to do is rotate this 180 degrees. 
and then I can move it a little bit more this way. And what does that do? Well, now I need way less supports for this file. I only need supports for here. Of course, the downside of this is the supports have to hold up this edge. It's going to make this a little bit more rough because you have to break the supports off the side of the sphere. You can sand it down. And in reality, I probably would sand it down anyway, just because anytime you have the top of a sphere, the layer lines end up really showing very clearly at the top of any sphere that you print. And so either way, I would sand it down a little bit. And so I'm not really losing much here. And I'm using way less supports on this. And the best part is, is now I can take one of these files and bring it around the side here. And you'll notice that it's kind of intersecting right there. And so what I can do is just drag this to the left just a little bit. And you can see what this does. I now have this printing on the inside of this ring. And by the time it gets high enough that the X and the Y sort of intersect here, it's higher than the other print and it will still print just fine. And the best part is now I can actually fit this ring right here, which is kind of nice. And in fact, I can honestly probably put these two files in the middle of this as well to do kind of the same thing, which allows me to bring everything in just a little bit closer towards the middle. And you want to bring things in closer together if you can, just because if you think about it while your 3D printer is going, the farther the nozzle has to travel to print each part, the more time the print's going to take. And so it'll cut down on time just a little bit by bringing everything in a little bit closer. And so look at this. We were worried about fitting all of these files on a Ender 3 size bed. It looks like we could fit it on something even a little bit smaller than an Ender 3 or an Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro size bed. Okay, so next let's talk about blocking supports. On this print itself, on this file, we really don't need any supports at all. It should be obvious why I don't need these three rings. It will bridge just fine on the inside, and it should be pretty obvious why I don't need this support right here. Again, anytime we have the top of a circle, it ends up correcting itself just fine, and it connects just fine. The same, it turns out, is true on the inside of a sphere. As it gets on the inside um, towards the top, it will get a little stringy, but that's on the inside of the Pokeball. And we're rarely looking at that, and so it really doesn't matter. Um, and it will correct itself on the top, so it'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and put a support down. And let's make sure uniform scaling is on. Make sure we're selected on the support itself. If I can actually click on the support. And let's make the whole thing bigger so that we can block the entire Pokeball, at least the entire Pokeball part. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about here. Let me hit slice. And if we go to preview, you can see as it goes up, it always has something to build off of until it gets towards the near top and the overhang starts getting sort of greater and greater. It will become stringy on the inside. But like I said, it will correct itself on the top. So it will be fine on the top side. It'll just be a little ugly on the inside. But no one's really looking at the inside of these prints. And so... The upside is you're saving a lot of time on the print, you're saving a lot of material to remove that support, and you're saving yourself the headache of removing those supports themselves. The downside is the inside's going to look a little stringy, but it works just fine functionally. So let's go back to prepare. Um, what other supports do we want to block? Um, you might look at this and say, well, that's a ring right there, so we can block that support. It's so small, and I and it's sort of connected with these supports right here. I'll actually leave that support. Um, it will bridge, but this piece actually has to fit inside of there. And so I don't want to deal with the bridging. It might mess with the functionality. I'm actually going to leave that support as is. And the same is true on the inside of this piece right here. I'm going to leave these supports as is. And obviously, I'm going to leave these supports so that the sphere can build up off of itself. Um, what other supports do we have to deal with here? And the answer is one right here that I can't really see. If I change my view, I can see it a little bit better. You might have noticed when I put in that other file. Let me drop it in again. 
um, that this was laid on its side. And if you think about it, it's kind of clever to lay this on its side. It will still need supports, but now the supports are touching the build plate instead of touching the inside of the print. And so let's go ahead and delete this. Um, I could have just kept that and deleted these two now that I think about it, but oh well, let's just rotate this um, this way. And actually it was probably more sideways, and so let's go 90 degrees this way. And I think this is how it was set up. I don't need the supports on the inside of the ring right here, so let's go ahead and block it on this side. But I do want these supports underneath this. Now, do you see how it's dark blue right there? That means that the file is actually going through the bed. And so let me grab the entire thing and drag it up a little bit. And so now you see that it's light blue. You can actually drag files through the bed and it'll only print the half that is above the bed. I want it on here all the way, the entire part, obviously. And I do want these supports holding up this piece as it prints up, obviously. Okay, and there's a few other places with supports that we need to address, and that is on the inside of these rings. I do want under these rings, you know, hopefully that's obvious, but I would like to block the rings on the top where the hinges go. And so how do I do that? Well, I'm going to drag it up just a little bit, and then I can actually drag it into the middle, and it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here. I want to make this bigger with uniform scaling off, so I'll only go in the Y direction. Let's go to, I don't know, 300. And there we go. I can now drag this down just a little bit. And you can see that I'm blocking the tops of the rings, but not the bottoms, which is a good thing because I want those supports down there. Um, there's another hinge right here that I need to block, and it looks like I don't have to worry about the placement of it anywhere near as much on this one. Um, so we'll just put a support there and tell it to be a little bit bigger in the X direction so that it's blocking everything. And there is one more place where there is one more support, and it's actually on this hook, but it's kind of hard to see. And so what I'm going to do is zoom through my Pokeball itself. Um, you can see how useful this is. Right now I'm looking inside of my Pokeball. And so you can see I'm on the inside here. I can go through the Pokeball to now see the support that is needed for that hook with it flipped over like this. I'm okay with the supports building off of the print itself to hold that up. Those supports will be easy enough to break off. And again, if it's ugly, no one's really looking at the inside of the Pokeball, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and slice this as is. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add a raft, and let's make that raft, yeah, 5 millimeters is probably a good amount, and hit Slice. And let's go to Preview. If we look at everything, we can see there's a raft under everything. We've got supports everywhere we wanted them, like holding up this ring, holding up the Pokeball itself that we flipped upside down. We definitely want that to make sure the sphere prints just fine. We wanted supports underneath this file, and we got it. We wanted to block the supports inside these rings and inside the hinges. We wanted this support here, and we got it. The only weird place where there is supports not doing exactly what I want is that last one we just talked about, which is this hook. It looks like it's sort of glitching out a little bit, and sometimes this happens with Cure, unfortunately. The supports start to build up off of the print itself and then it sort of ends and then restarts a few layers later and it looks like that when it restarts it's not really building on anything it thinks it's still building off of these supports I guess it is connecting to this edge to a certain extent so I'm not too concerned about this ability to print it will probably correct itself after a few layers. The stringiness will be enough for the support to build off of itself. And that combined with the fact that this hook is such a small overhang, I am fairly certain that this would work just fine. Looks like it's 11 hours to print, 141 grams. And I'm fairly confident that 
this print would work just fine as is. And so there you go. I was able to fit everything on one bed. Now, I do want to take a second to discuss some of the downsides to fitting too many things on one bed. Sometimes I'll have five or six students needing to print things at the same time. And so I'll put all of their prints on the same bed if I can. But then you start dealing with, you know, 700 gram prints that take three days to print. And that is sort of the downside to fitting too much onto one printer because, I mean, think about it. If the print takes more filament than you have left on your roll, and heck, if it's, you know, sometimes I'll get 1,500 gram prints or 1.5 kilograms, and your standard roll is only one kilogram or 1,000 grams, or even if I just only have about 600 grams of filament left on my roll and it's a 700 gram print. I'm going to have to change out that roll halfway through. And that's fine if I'm there when that happens. But if I'm not, the print's going to stop. And that might cause problems and cause the print to fail at that point when we run out of filament, especially if I'm not there when that print runs out of filament. Just Remember, the longer the print is, the longer the setup is, the longer the amount of time it takes to print, the more opportunities the print has to fail. Let's just say the power goes out. Again, that's fine if you're there. Most printers have the resume print function, but if you're not there to resume the print, most printers don't actually reheat when the power comes back on. So if you're not there to hit restart immediately, the printer will cool, the print bed will cool, and your print might actually stop adhering to the plate when the temperature changes. And so you have to take that into consideration when you're putting too many things on one print bed. If one of my prints aren't set up correctly, let's say this one was set up, this little file right here was set up badly and I didn't realize it. And it starts to fail halfway through. That might not be a big deal. It's just one little file is failing with the rest of them. You'll get a little bit of a stringy mess on the other files. But sometimes one little piece failing is enough to fail the entire print. And so if failure happens, that might ruin all of these files, therefore wasting all of that filament and all of that time when sometimes it's just better to separate your files over several different prints, if that makes sense. And so you kind of use your best judgment on this. This print is less than 150 grams and it'll only take about 11 hours so I can start in the morning and I can watch it almost the entire time. And it's nice to have all of it on just one print so that you can put it together and you have it all together with one print. And so upsides and downsides, be aware of that. If you are worried about this support in a way that I'm not, I do have a way to set this one up so that I'm still fitting everything on the bed, but we don't need supports on this angle. Let's go back to prepare. I can rotate this at an angle, maybe another 30 degrees this way. And now I can even slide it a little bit to the left now. Now it doesn't need supports on this hook because of that small overhang angle here. It doesn't need those supports and it still prints just fine going up. The only weird part will be your layer lines will be going in a diagonal direction, which isn't that big a deal. Again, you can sand that down if you wanted to, but I wouldn't take the time to do this personally. Again, I think those supports will be just fine. Um, I need to move it back to where I had it though. I think this one will work just fine. And hopefully this video helped you learn how to organize a print bed and various clever ways to set up prints to block supports and hopefully learned a little bit deeper about setting up prints in general and sort of the ins and outs of blocking supports as you go.